If you're looking to build, buy, or protect your home from electromagnetic radiation, EMF, there are 11 key mistakes that you'll want to avoid to have a safe, protected, and healthy home for you and your family. Be sure to stick around to the end because I've got some bonus information and you will learn how to get free EMF protective gear delivered to your door. If you're new to EMF protection, all these wireless signals are taking their toll on many. Effects can vary from person to person, which is why some people think that the whole idea of EMF safety is just a joke, while a growing number treat it like a religion. When we are overexposed, it can cause irritability, dizziness, poor sleep, and headaches. But for some, the effects are much worse, like cancer. That's why you need to make sure that wherever you spend the most time is low on EMF, like your home. It's time to make your home an EMF-free sanctuary. Let's get started. Mistakes can happen on both the inside and the outside of your home. Let's start outside and work our way inside. In real estate, you'll often hear that a good home is about three things. Location, location, and location. And the same goes for EMF. So if you're building or buying a new home, be sure to consider location first. Mistake number 11, living too close to power lines and transformer stations. When it comes to power lines, you don't want to live too close. If you're so close to the line that you could hear it buzzing or feel the hairs on your arm start to stand up, then you're much too close. When I was younger, I remember a small home under a large electrical pole just down my street. And at one point, the outside was decorated with colored ribbons as someone was fighting cancer. Well, that image really stuck with me since then and got me thinking about how safe it really was to live under a big power line like that. I also have a friend that lived close to a power relay who lost their mom to cancer. Coincidence? Transformers produce a heavy magnetic field that is unblockable, but fortunately it diminishes rapidly with distance, so keeping your distance is key. But how close is too close? Personally, I would want to live at least a block away from any big power lines and relay transformer stations. That's why it's more than just handy to have ba -ba -da -bum, an EMF meter. A radiation detector will also be able to detect hidden dangers emitting unsafe levels of radiation, likely from large buried electrical wires. If you're new to EMF, then I recommend the GQ EMF 390. That's this one. It's a nice starter one. But also the Trifield TF2 is great for getting started too. This one's a little more technical. If you want something simple, I'd go with the Trifield. And feel free to drop in the comments your EMF meter of choice. I'd love to hear it. And if you plan on measuring dirty electricity, which you should, I recommend picking up one of these. This is an old AM radio handheld, so battery operated right here. And uh, the thing about these, you want to get an old one because they don't have the, um, the filters to filter out the noise. And the noise is what you're looking for with dirty electricity. There's also meters that you can use that you plug into the wall and filters we'll talk about here in a little bit. Electrical stations can produce high amounts of dirty electricity that can travel and affect your home over a mile away. Additionally, poor wiring and electronics can cause dirty electricity to rear its ugly head. So if you're building a house, then be sure to not skimp on wiring. Mistake number 10, living too close to cell towers. Stay away. Proximity is a big issue for cell towers too. They are pretty easy to spot even when they are disguised as an awkward looking tree or cactus, but the easiest way to track them down is through a site such as Cell Mapper or Antenna Search. You simply enter in your address, select a carrier, and search for the antennas. You can check the video description for in-depth guides on finding 4G cell towers, and these are the standard ones, the big ones that you see, and 5G cell towers. These are the ones that many people are extra worried about because of the millimeter waves they emit. In general, you want to be at least a mile away from the nearest cell tower. Now, 5G cell towers are much smaller and can be put on top of existing things, like lampposts, so they can be hard to spot. 5G towers can't transmit a signal as far, but it's much more intense when it's near. That's why they are putting up so many of them to build the 5G network. Depending on where you live, it might be difficult to get away from one, so look at the maps and be as far away as possible from any 5G tower. Mistake number nine, not scanning for smart meters. On the outside of any home, there are meters for measuring water, gas, and electricity. More and more of these meters are being swapped out for wirelessly transmitting smart meters. The problem is that some of these meters are continuously transmitting a signal, and that's a big problem while others are sending out signals much less frequently. That's less of a problem. The utility provider should have information on how often a signal is transmitted, or you can measure it with an EMF meter. An EMF meter that can log data over time, like this one, the GQ EMF 390, can be helpful to leave and then read later so you can see how the EMF changes over time and identify how often it blasts out wirelessly. If needed, you can install a smart meter cover to lessen the signal to much safer levels 
but removing the hazard altogether is the best option. Many companies do allow you to opt out, but will likely charge an extra fee for having someone to come out and take manual readings of your analog meter. But then again, you might just have neighbors living nearby or live in a complex, so you'll need to pay attention to where the smart meters are located and take precautions as necessary. If you're lucky enough to have an analog, that's the non-smart meter, then be sure to tag it stating that you do not give approval for the unit to be exchanged for a smart meter. Mistake number eight, using Wi-Fi internet in your home. Now Wi-Fi has become such a commodity that it's hard to ditch, but you get Wi-Fi internet, but you get Wi-Fi internet almost everywhere you go. So please consider going wireless in your home and only using wired internet, or at least turning it off when it's not in use and putting the modem router in an area that isn't occupied frequently. It's easy to want all the convenient smart home accessories that require constant wireless internet. Even I want all those things, but I value my health over the convenience and coolness. And as others do too, there's sure to be more wired options that come to the market. Mistake number seven is not considering your appliances and their EMF. Many people think that once they take care of the Wi-Fi, then things are good. Well, that's just wrong. Anything that plugs in generates EMF, some much more than others. Ovens, washers, dryers, computers, TV, and even alarm clocks. Each of these should be measured to ensure that it is low on EMF, or at the very least design your home setup so you're not parked next to the appliances for long periods of time. For the most part, creating distance will do what most people need. And like I mentioned before, stay away from wireless smart appliances and accessories if you're looking to decrease your EMF levels, which I hope you are. Mistake number six, using CFL light bulbs and or dimmers. Besides being terrible for the environment, CFL bulbs, that's the swirly twirly compact fluorescent light bulbs, generate a lot of dirty electricity, EMF. Dimmers do the same thing. Really anything that throttles or changes the electrical flow is going to add to your dirty electricity EMF levels. And this EMF travels through all the wiring in your home, potentially making no place a safe place. So stick with Edison incandescent light bulbs or use natural sunlight as much as possible. Mistake number five, crowded living. Crowded cities do have much better nightlife, that's for sure. But make no mistake about it, they also tend to have much higher levels of EMF. I realize that this won't work for everyone, but it's worth considering living rural or in less crowded areas where housing is more spread out. If you've been looking for an excuse to get out of the city, well, this may be your ticket. Mistake number four is not hiring a professional. Consumer EMF meters like these are helpful in identifying problem areas, but an EMF professional is well worth the investment if you are buying a home, building a home, or considering staying in a place for extended periods of time. These inspectors have access to expensive, professional-grade measurement equipment that is just simply more powerful and accurate than an entry-level EMF meter. If you decide to go the professional route, check out the video description below for more details on finding the right professional for you. Mistake number three is measuring EMF incorrectly. Even if you're going to have a professional take care of you, you should learn how to measure EMF appropriately. If you're haphazardly taking measurements around your home, then you might have a hard time identifying the root problem. And that's everything with EMF. You wanna find the root problem and mitigate it as much as possible. The easiest way to detect EMF problem areas is to measure all EMF levels inside and outside your home with the power off. This means heading over to the breaker and shutting off power while you measure the EMF. Make note of levels in each area and spend at least a minute in each location to get the most accurate reading. EMF isn't constant, it fluctuates. You'll need to be there just a little bit of time. Then turn the power back on and do the measurements again. On the second round, I would recommend taking measurements with everything turned on and then systematically turning things off and watching how the levels drop. That really helps you find problem areas. Be sure to test turning off at the outlet level. So just because a lamp is turned off and still plugged in, it might be causing some EMF or a TV is plugged in but turned off. You wanna unplug it to really do an accurate reading. Mistake number two is not having a budget for EMF protective upgrades. So things that you'll need do cost a little bit, so you'll need to make sure that you have a budget. This isn't something that you should ignore. Living in this kind of situation may not be affecting you a lot right now, but the long-term effects can really add up. So be sure to have something set aside so you can invest in any protective measures that you might need and any gear that you need to help identify problem areas. And mistake number one is not checking for dirty electricity. Okay, okay, I know I've mentioned this before, but it really deserves a mistake of its own. Here's why. I wanna put dirty electricity into perspective here. Dirty electricity comes along with having electrical power, but it varies in quantity. Many electrical devices nowadays are creating quite a bit of it, so it's something not to put on the back burner. Take a look at this study documenting childhood leukemia deaths in relation 
to the USA becoming more electrified. To put in perspective, typical rates are 0.4 per 100,000 in a non-electrified areas to more than 4 per 100,000 in industrialized countries. So at about 1925, roughly half of the US was on the power grid. Notice how the rates climb as the grid is rolled out across the country. And I definitely recommend checking out this book, Dirty Electricity by Samuel Milham, Dr. Samuel Milham, to get a good overview on the subject. He's a scientist, so he's a bit technical at times, but overall, it's an easy and very informative read. His story about La Quinta Middle School in California is quite telling of the dangers involved with overly high and prolonged exposure to dirty electricity. Fortunately, dirty electricity can be eliminated or brought down to safe levels with the use of dirty electricity filters and wiring improvements. EMF protection really boils down to three things, detect, eliminate or reduce, and block as necessary. If you're interested in getting free EMF gear delivered to your door, go check out the video description right now. And don't think I haven't forgot about our bonus. This is bonus information. Thanks for sticking to the end. Besides houses, you've got to consider your occupation and possible hazards there. EMF has been a problem for many, many years, and it's only growing with all the wireless gunk we fill our airwaves with. Here's a couple examples you might be interested in from the book, Dirty Electricity. Let's sit down in our reading corner. So turn with me, if you have the book, to page 35. Leukemia in Electrical Workers. Just read you a little passage here. What's to meet you in this book? When my first state occupational mortality tables became available, I looked at cancers in men who worked in jobs with connection to electricity. These included electricians, power and telephone linesmen, aluminum workers, radio and TV repairmen, welders, power station workers, and so on. These workers turned out to have increased mortality due to leukemia, especially acute leukemia, lymphoma, and brain tumors. When the letters I wrote on these findings was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, I received a number of calls from colleagues around the country saying that there was no way these weak fields could cause cancer. My answer was simply, prove me wrong. But unfortunately, over the next few months, they and others proved me right. The last time I looked, there were over 50 residential and 100 occupational studies that now associate power frequency magnetic field exposures with cancer. Stay away from being too close to electricity. I know we love it, but it's not healthy for you. Just 100% guaranteed you'll be healthier creating distance and limiting your exposure to these electro and magnetic fields. And as always, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear some resources from you. I'm just on this journey. Want to go with you. Let's learn together. Have an EMF safe family. Catch you next time. If you're looking to build, buy, or protect your home from electromagnetic radiation, EMF, there are 11...